music. And a majority of it came from the original creators of rock and roll, Chuck Berry. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Andre, Dr. Dre Brown, hip-hop pioneer. My name is Denisha Boston-Hill, along with Ray Schwetz on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. When you were a little kid and you thought about what you wanted to be, teaching was at the top of your list. But things changed. And as you got older, teaching didn't seem like the best option anymore. So you're thinking you'll be something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Now you want to be a doctor. You don't think teachers save lives? 25 at a time. An actress? Try playing a different role every time the bell rings. How about a scientist? Ever heard of physics? Chemistry? Who do you think teaches that? Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, and taking learning far beyond the four walls of the classroom. It's time to recognize that great things are happening in teaching and put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Find out how you can make more at teach.org. Make more. Teach. Brought to you by Teach and the Ad Council. And welcome back to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Anisha Boston-Hill, along with Ray Schwartz, and our guest today is Andre Dr. Dre Brown, hip-hop pioneer. So, Dre, talk to us a little bit about, you know, Run DMC and your days at Adelphi. Well, as I said, uh, I met um, Bill Stephanie... Uh, Chuck D and Harry, Harold McGregor, also known as Harry Allen, in that black music class with Dr. Andre Strobert. And it was uh, Bill and Chuck's foresight to say, hey, man, you know, you're kind of cool. We need to take you over and show you the radio station. Have you ever seen the radio station? I said, what radio station? The BAU. I said, I heard about it, but I, kn- I didn't know it was here. So they dragged me over to the UC at the Delphi University, and we went upstairs, and I got to see BAU for the first time. And then Bill's telling me about the time. He said, oh, wait a minute, you're Mr. Bill. You don't even look like the guy. <laughs> <He> said, yeah, everybody <laughs> always says that. And, you know, Chuck, and then, you know, we were going to class so many times, and one day Chuck came to class, and he was wearing a Spectrum City jacket. Now, for me, being a um, uh, founding member of the group called The Concept DJ Group, we absolutely hated Spectrum City. Well, we do hated Spectrum, not Spectrum City, because we were trying to get to DJ at a uh, school out here at Long Island University, CW Post, and there was this guy who used to DJ, his name was Spectrum, and you had to get in close with the fraternities to try to get in and, and get at least a gig, because we knew we were really good, but we could never get in there. So he kind of blackballed us out of it. So I'm looking at Chuck one day, and I'm like, man, let me ask you a question, man. Why don't you let us DJ over there, man? Why don't you give us a shot? <laughs> and he said... What are you talking about? I said, yeah, we over tried to go to post. I got friends over there. They said we should be DJing, but you won't let us get in there and get down. He said, no, that's not us. Oh, you talking about that other guy. He stole our name. I said, what? He said, that's why it's <laughs> Spectrum City. We changed it. So I was like, wow, man, because I was about to start fighting. And now I'm like, I'm kind of happy. I'm so glad to meet you. If Chuck D was the guy, you would have never introduced him to Russell Simmons and Ruben. <clears throat> no, I had nothing to do with that. That's a, that's a different progression. A different, that's a different simple progression. Okay. But no, simply though, it was that we found that common thing. And that's when I met uh, President Hank Shockley, uh, Wizard KG, also known as Keith Shockley. And of course, Chuck D and Butch Cassidy at the time. And this is, I met this other little strange guy. And I call him a little strange guy because at the time he was, because his name was MC DJ Flavor. Not uh-huh. Flavor Flavor, he was called MC DJ Flavor. And we all assembled at the Mr. Bill Show on Monday nights. That's where it all began for us. And then they told me about the Super Spectrum Mix Hour one half on Saturdays that they used to do. And Bill used to host the first ten from 10 to 11.30. And then he did a mix from 11.30 to 1. And it was like, introduced me. I was like, wow, this is really cool. So I started hanging out up there all the time. And then Bill said, you know what? You need to learn how to be an engineer. You should, you should, because I used to just, as, as people don't realize, we used to answer phones. We used to, you know, bring the guests in and talk to folks and do all that stuff. That was the way it started. <laughs> so in doing that, that, that integral beginning of getting to uh, be a part of someone else's show, I got to meet then the group Run DMC at, uh, when they put out the song It's Like That and Sucker MCs. They'd come up and they just released their first album and they came up for an interview. Why? Because they used to listen to BAU and Mr. Bill show all the time. Oh, wow. So I took this picture with them thanks to Harold, Harold McGregor. He took a picture of myself with Run and DMC and the late, great Jam Master J. And people see it. And I'm wearing a Westbury jersey and I'm wearing a hat that says the concept on it. And that photo's been all over the world. And people go, wow, 
when did this happen? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I was going to school at Adelphi University at that time. And the, the blessing was uh, after Bill decided to step down and I moved up and became music program director over there and I eventually became the PD and I became the general manager at the station, that, <laughs> which is really kind of strange. I took over doing the morning, the uh, Monday night show and I had the responsibilities of doing the show before uh, the Super Spectrum mix out one half and then they kept giving us once a month they would let the concept do an hour and a half mix so we again we became very close friends we joined the same uh, record pools we hung out and doing everything and then we started throwing parties together and then uh, eventually we created this show called the MC DJ Flavor Show where he used to play tapes from the local area from everybody and we had all types of different groups from here that evolved into groups like the Leaders of the New School also with Buster Rhymes wow. uh, Young Black Teenagers YBT uh, let's see the Deadly MCs, Townhouse 3 MCs, and then it started, you know, we, we started doing all these different things, so the evolution of getting to Def Jam was simple. We would we always just do these station promos for BAU, and uh, I did one called uh, It's Great to Be Here, slash, not the, the, the um, published version is called Can You Feel It? Mm-hmm. Also with the BW side, it's called, back with a song called Knowledge Me, which was basically a song promoting the station and we were discussing you know going yo cuz yo I went down to the Hempstead terminal me and the guards came up to me what was they kicking to you cuz they said knowledge me of me cuz that's what we did we were hanging out with folks like that all the time and it was a station promo so uh, Run it told me he said man you need to go play this for Russell I said Russell he said yeah my brother Russell go up to, to Rush and check it out so I went to the city and I went and met Russell Simmons, and I met Dr. Jekyll, and I met Leo Cohen, and I met the great Bill Adler, Heidi Smith, um, Tony Rome, and uh, I was starting to play stuff for him. He was like, yo, man, don't play this with me. You need to go take this down to see Rick. I said, Rick. Now, I had heard about Rick because I had a friend in Long Beach named Peter Cooperschmidt at the time who did a lot of jingles and a lot of musical stuff, and we used to record out of this studio out there. And he told me about Rick, and then... Run, I guess, had told him about the station, and he got a chance to hear through tapes and stuff like that. And when we met, I met him at his NYU dorm, which Rick, you know, was always in his dorm at the time, putting Def Jam together because we were fascinated about him because he did a song with Teela Rock and Jazzy J called "It's La- It's It's Yours," and we were like, "Yo, this is so cool." So when I met him, he said, "Yo, this is you." He said, "Yeah." He said, "Yo, I heard you got some cool things." So I started playing him all these different sh- songs from BAU. And he heard knowledge me and fell off the bed and like, yo, this is incredible. Who's this? I said, it's me and my partner, T Money. He said, what? Yo, I gotta sign you. I gotta sign you. Wow. This is great. And then he heard it's it's great to be here. Then we eventually called it. Can you feel it? And he said, yo, this is it. Yo, yo, yo we gotta sign you to Def Jam. So we were signed to Def Jam early out when they were still burgundy and gray, and then they got the deal with CBS and got became black and silver. In between that. I played him uh, uh, a another station promo for BAU called Public Enemy Number One. Now, early beyond before that, Spectrum City had done a single on the Vanguard label called uh, "Check Out the Radio and Lies." Now, Chuck and Hank and the guys they were very reluctant to want to do another record deal because of the, they, that deal went kind of sour with them, mm. and. I played this song for Rick because I was hanging out with the Beasties a lot and they were like, yo, you gotta play this for Rick. This is such a cool, yo, you gotta play this, you gotta play this, this is incredible. So I played it for Rick and he was like, what? And I, I went to his dorm room and Ralph Russell was sleeping in there at the time. He was laying on the, on the futon or whatever you want to call it. So I'm playing the song and he's going there and it's, it's starting to play and you're hearing, yo, Chuck, then, and he goes, what goes on, Powell? <laughs> Russell walks up, presses the tape out and throws it out the window. I said, yo, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Yo, man, that's noise. It's all garbage. It's never gonna. That'll never do anything. Who knew? Public Enemy, and it wasn't. They weren't called Public Enemy at the time. It was just a station promo. Wow. That's what it really was. So everything that, that that Rick picked up on, that Run and DMC and them all loved, was stuff that we did as station promos. So we were doing stuff like that because there were no. We didn't have an abundance of records at the time. That that were rap records at the time. There was some stuff, but most of it, some of it was garbage. Some of it was good, and. We just tried to fill in the gaps because, like Flavor said, yo, the station is what it is because we play the tapes from everybody around the way. So if you had a tape and we got to play it, it was cool. We only had one cassette deck at the time. That was funny. And we, if you would do a song that you play the cassette, then you switch back off and keep going back and forth, back and forth. I mean, back in those days, I mean, I used, I used to hate love those days, and now I love 
those days totally because we had so much fun being creative and not being certain of what this was about. We just had a drive and a spirit to say, we're doing this and we're doing this good. And you know what? We had to, We, I mean, we all grew up with Mr. Magic and Africa Islam on WHBI. Then he went to BLS. Uh, we grew up with the great DJ Red Alert, the great Chuck Chill Out on Kiss FM at that time. And we just wanted to at least be able to say, we're as good as. And that was the whole thing. So being blessed, like I said, with Bill being a mentor and Bill setting the, the pace and, and, and the place for everything. The one thing I remember he said when he left, he said, Dre, I'm leaving all of this to you. I said, <laughs> what's that supposed to mean? He said, all the headaches, all the phone calls, <laughs> all the craziness, all the nonsense. I'm leaving it to you. Now you'll have fun. I said, I don't know if that's a gift or a curse. What are you going to do it? It was a curse, but it was also a great gift. And I'm so blessed to have been there when that happened. And, and it's watch, watch it evolve. And even my own evolution from going from there to station WNWK with Aaron Fuchs from Tough City, who gave me the opportunity to go and broadcast during the week for him out there in the city where Magic and them got their start, which was called a, a WHBI there. Then they changed it to WNWK. And matter of fact, uh, Special K and Teddy Ted used to also broadcast out of there. And then after that, I got... Uh, I was requested to be the DJ for the for the Beastie Boys on the tour. So after we went and recorded Knowledge Me and Can You Feel It with Rick at the studio, um, Run DMC was working on the album Raising Hell. And they were coming back playing and stuff. Yo, Dre, what do you think? This is cool enough? I said, yo, but this is great. This is cool. And he said, uh, I was in the studio one time and they said, yo, you think you guys can write a song for us? I said, we said, I said yeah, I can do one. He said, right now, right now. I need you to go to the studio right now. So we're in the studio started banging out on DMX uh, drum machine and T-Money was there and he was helping me put some parts of it together and then I said okay here's the beat he says yo the beat is crazy Dre it's hot hot write the song I said write the song he said yeah we need a song we need like a black power song oh uh, okay black power song huh yeah something you know with the energy and you know it's gotta be you know positive and you gotta hit me with us okay so we called up my friend rapper G and we said yo G we gotta um do this song for Run DMC. It's got to be called something like, I don't know, we got to be like proud to be black or something of that nature. And he said, yeah, okay. So he said, can I get in? I said, no, we're going to take the tape, go back home. No, no, you got to come in here and do it now. No, no, we're going to go get him and then play for him, let him give him a minute to write it. So we went back, played it for him, he started writing it, came back with the lyrics to it. He said, okay, is he ready to do it? Let's do it. We'll get the, he said, give me the words. He said, no, no, let him go in and do it. And he went in there and he laid it down. And then they said, this is great, this is great. Then Run and D went in there and laid it down. The song ended up becoming Proud to be Black on the Raising Hell album. Which is an amazing song. We want to thank you for being with us. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill, your co-hosts and producers. The creative director of Tower Talk Business Radio is Rudy Breedy. This is an NCC Foundation Business Leaders Council production. Visit ncc.edu slash whpc for more information. Available as, uh, uh, available on iHeartRadio as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nass Community College Foundation, on the voice of Nass Community College 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk with you next week.